Good evening to you here on 101.1 The River. It is a Monday night here from the campus of the University of Dubuque. Uh, I think we're going to hear just me now. It's yeah. <laughs> everybody's trying to get in on the conversation. A little background. Yeah, it's going to be uh, me and Coach Zuifel here uh, in just a moment. But uh, I want to bring you up to date on the Spartan football here on a Monday night before the Spartans kick off their Iowa conference schedule. Here on uh, 101.1 The River, the Spartans are uh, going to be rested and refreshed, ready to go after a bye week, and uh, especially after a great win the last time they played as they were at Pacific University and uh, came home with a nice win, uh, coming home from Forest Grove, Oregon, uh, with a 31-29 victory. And we'll be excited to uh, talk with Coach Sweefel about that game and uh, get his thoughts and, of course, uh, get you ready for the Iowa Conference opener when the Spartans take on Luther College to open up uh, the conference portion of the schedule this Saturday at Chalmers Field. And you'll be able to hear the game here on 101.1, the River pregame coming at uh, 1240, and we'll be kicking it off at 1 o'clock. So be sure to uh, tune in for that. Uh, I know a lot of fans will be uh, coming out to support the Spartans as well here at Chalmers Field for the Iowa Conference opener. We'll come back, and we'll hear from Coach Zweifel, and we'll get the University of Dubuque football show underway when we return you're listening to the UD Football Show with Stan Zweifel on 101.1 The River. And we're back here on Monday night. The UD Football Show with Stan Zweifel here on a Monday night. And we've got Coach with us now. And, uh, Coach, uh, good to see you. And uh, we'll talk about a big win for you against the Pacific Boxers. Last time the uh, Spartans played a week ago uh, this past Saturday, but uh, good to have you back on the show again. Thanks, Tim, and your shirt you're sporting tonight looks really good. Well, I appreciate <laughs> it. Looks really good, and that's yeah. a good part. I know if you can, they can't see it on radio, but it's a good-looking shirt. Yeah, well, I appreciate uh, the uh, our wardrobe uh, uh, our folks getting us uh, all pleasure. set up with her with her new UD football shoots, shirts, and they do look very sharp. And uh, our pleasure. You're looking sharp as well tonight, Coach. You know, kind of an unusual <laughs> Monday for us, uh, Tim. You know, we had a bye week this past Saturday, and we'll get back to the Pacific game. But we practiced today. We uh, gave our men off Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And so they had a nice three-day break. We did a community service project in town here on Friday, cleaned up Florida Park. Each of our athletic teams on the uh, uh, University of Butte take a different park, and uh, the football team gets Florida Park. We have the most members in the biggest park and did community service on Friday <clears throat> about 3 o'clock to 4.30, cleaned up the park, and then sent our kids off for those kids who went home, watched some of their high school football teams play. And, Others just really relaxed. Others got their, you know, got a little bit of jump start on some of their projects they might have had for their classes. But it was a really nice uh, time away from us. And then we came back and get an extra day practice for our op conference opening game against Luther. Great going into the bye week with yes. a victory under your belt. So yes. Great experience out there in Oregon from all accounts. Uh, and uh, you came home with a victory as a, as a huge bonus, 31-29 to 29 over Pacific. You know, we left Friday a.m. at 3 a.m. in the morning, and that uh, <laughs> that was interesting in itself. <laughs> got out there about uh, 11.30. We had a little bit of a flight delay in Chicago, but got out there at 11.30 and practiced uh, Friday afternoon and then let them sleep a little bit later on Saturday morning and played a Saturday night six o'clock game and then took off on Sunday afternoon and this uh, trip really went smooth. Coach Dernan, our, our assistant head coach who takes care of the travel for us, uh, did a tremendous job getting everything arranged. Hotel accommodations were fantastic. The bus drivers did an outstanding job both to Chicago and from uh, Portland down to Forest Grove but everything went really well and to top things off, we played, I don't know if we played a four-quarter complete game, Tim, but we played our best game of the season. And, um, again, that's a really good football team. We talked about them last year being second, and they've actually been conference co-champs with Linfield. And this year they um, were 1-0, and we played them. They had beaten the College of Idaho, and we had a really good football game. We were really in control of that game at 31-14 uh, late in the third quarter, and then a couple things happened that they closed to 31-29, but our men really hung in there and played hard, and we won the game. And, again, I'll, I'll say this. They're going to win a lot of football games. Pacific University is going to win a lot of football games. So, overall, you know, we played St. John's, an outstanding team. We played UW Platform, an outstanding team. I think we got back to a – a level where it was more competitive, and uh, we won that game, and I think that'll be a good springboard for us. Going back to the first half of that game, uh, you mentioned you, you 
had control uh, for, for a good part of that game. And the reason you, you got off to a great start, I mean, uh, that, that by far the best start to the season. You were waiting for that. Yeah, we did. We talked about uh, really one of the things we talked about all week was getting off to a fast start and not being behind 14 to nothing or 21 nothing like we were in the first two games. And I, I thought our men responded to that offensively. We threw an interception on our first possession, but we really thought we had a good game plan up, and they came out and played exactly what we thought they were going to play. And uh, I thought our offense, both throwing the ball and running the ball, had its best balance of the season, both in two back and one back. And then our defense really played very well, uh, created, I think, that guy's one of the better quarterbacks we've faced in the years that I've been here. And we've really been able to give him problems uh, by a variety of different coverages. But we just played really good on the outside. Our perimeter corner people played good. We gave up a real cheap touchdown, which I think got them back into the game. Tim got some momentum back. But other than two really, uh, I think, uh, coverage busts, mistakes in our coverage, uh, I thought we played a really good football game. And our special teams did another good job. And I think all in all, we were very happy about how we played. Mentioned that uh, you had a 24-7 lead uh, before things would tighten up there in the second half. And then you had a crucial drive to start the fourth quarter with and uh, finish that off with a touchdown. And uh, that was really big at that point because they were getting some momentum. So, again, your offense uh, really did a good job there. Yeah, and our defense did a really nice job of not letting them drive the ball. Other than I said those two big, uh, really long plays, they had, I think our defense did a really good job of getting them off the field. And that's important for us. And then we – you know, we had a chance uh, reel through a second pick late in the, I think it was early in the fourth quarter, on what we call a smash route, and their safety made an excellent play on it. We underthrew it just a little bit, and that seemed to give them a little bit of spark of life because I think that would have put it 38-14 had we made that touchdown in that part. But as I said, you know, there was a lot of uh, ebb and flow in that game, which it's going to be in most of our conference games. You're going to have good things happen to you. And you're going to have some things that aren't so good. And I thought our men responded to the critical times by hanging in there, making the plays when we had to. And our best football still ahead of us, Tim. Our best football still coming. So in that part, when you can get a win and still not play as good as you think you can play, that's really a, a, a good thing to build on. Your running game. Uh, yes. It was uh, really uh, excellent, especially in the second half. Uh, Maurice Herrion, uh, yeah. you sort of introduced us to him yeah. uh, in that game, and uh, <laughs> he came up with 122 yards and uh, a couple I, of touchdowns. I have to give you a story because Maurice Herrion goes by us by Mo Jackson, but his legal name is Maurice Herrion, so we have to put the legal name by the NCAA, but he's Mo Jackson. Okay, to so us. we'll call him Mo. So, anyhow. All right. Mo gets in there. Uh, we get uh, Davon Vance Jenkins had a little bit of a tender ankle, and sure enough, on his first touchdown run, the first possession or second possession, he gets his ankle nicked up. And he comes off, mm -hmm. and he says, to "Me, coach, I don't think I can go anymore." So, uh, we put our second kid in there, and it just it isn't working real well with him. So, I, I Mo had really had a really good fall camp. He's a little bit rusty; hasn't played in two years. So that part, and I just. I had a feeling that we could get more. He's a physical kid, and I thought we could get some run out. And he really had a good three first quarters. He ran extremely well, had 120-plus yards. Now he got really winded in the fourth quarter and got a little bit tired, and we dro he dropped the ball on the ground, which gave them a little bit of life. But, man, he was a spark for us in the first, second, and third quarter, and he's a really physical runner inside the tackles. And that's really one of our game plan was to try to get run inside the tackles against Pacific. So... That really was a pleasant surprise for all of us. You know, he, was, uh, he wasn't originally on the trip when we were going, so we had kind of discussed about what we were going to do about where we take the extra two kids, and we ended up taking Mo. Dang, it was a good, good deal that he went. <laughs> yeah, good thing he had a plane ticket. That, that is for sure. Uh, so, obviously, uh, to see a sign like that of a potential yeah. of a strong running game, I mean, yeah. that, uh, oh, that's yes. what you want as you start Iowa Conference play to balance things out. Yes, and you know Blaine Snitker is going to be back for his first mm -hmm. game. I think our best defensive player. And we've had one of our best running backs playing linebacker the first three games, a freshman, T.J. Jackson, who's an outstanding player. And the fans, and you're going to see him playing the next seven games at our tailback position. So we really feel like we've got really good depth and we brought T.J. back this week now to play some running back for us. He'll give us another. He's a big back, about 225 pounds, and that'll give us the change up that we're looking for. So with Mo and Davon Vance Jenkins and T.J. Jackson, we think we've got a really good complement of backfield people. 
Before we leave uh, the Pacific game and uh, turn our attention to Iowa Conference play, another strong suit of the defense. Uh, their run game uh, really couldn't get anything yeah. going. It was a, a strong effort defensively against the run by the Spartans. You know, we always go into every game trying to stop the run first. And, you know, the first two opponents, I think, you know, St. John's really was good, and they gave us a lot of trouble with their back, the Sura kid. And I think we played a little bit better against Platteville against the run, but I think we're getting better every week now. This new challenge on Saturday, as we'll talk about as we go on, now that's going to be a tremendous challenge in the run game because they're probably as effective a running game as anybody in Division Three, And we'll talk about the option, how, how very important it is to – uh, get them off the field and not let them dominate in the run game like they did against us last year. But I was very happy about how we played and the physicality we brought in the Pacific game. Before we uh, take our break, any uh, interesting stories from, yeah. from the trip out west? You know, when we came <laughs> back, we got back relatively about a midnight on Sunday. And uh, the bus driver that met us, oof, I'm not <laughs> sh sure that she had taken a lot of bus trips and we're leaving on I-55 out of Midway, and I'll be danged if we don't go the wrong way, kind of underneath a tunnel into a viaduct, and I'm like, hey, I don't think this is accurate the way we're going. I put a couple more adjectives on that, and we got a little bit mound up and back around, so we didn't get back in until about 2.30 on uh, Monday morning. We told the kids, hey, Monday's off, but you got to go to class, and I'm not sure how that worked out either, Tim, <laughs> as late as we got there, but... Really, it was a smooth trip, and Pacific was so gracious and had such great hospitality. And we're really in the um, making right now of trying to get a four-year contract with Pacific so we can go uh, the next four years of home and away with those guys because it's been a really competitive really contest, has. and it's yep. been so nice. And they're, they're really good guys. I like their, their football team and their staff. And they're, like I said, their school was so great host. And we really enjoyed having them coming here. So we're in the process of trying to get that contract extended for four years. And then you allow your kids to have a pretty nice trip every two years where you get a chance to fly to the coast and get in on an airplane, which you don't aren't able to do in Division Three very often. No doubt about that. Well, it's off the bye week now, and we're getting ready for the Iowa Conference portion of the season as the Spartans are focusing their attention solely on the Luther College Norris to open up Iowa Conference play here at Chalmers Field this Saturday night. And when our UD football show returns, we'll be talking about the Norse and Iowa Conference play ahead. You're listening to the UD football show on 101.1 The River. We're back on a Monday night before the Spartans play this Saturday right here at Chalmers Field where we uh, broadcast our UD football shows with uh, Coach Stan Zweifel. And from here on out... Throughout the rest of the season, we'll be here on Monday nights at 6 o'clock here on 101.1 The River. And uh, also uh, you can view the uh, broadcast as well, the television broadcast available on the uh, website of the University of Dubuque. You just uh, click on that uh, listen or uh, view line online link uh, that's available right there. Coach, before we get into uh, the Luther College Norse, uh, you mentioned uh, – this athlete, uh, a little bit earlier, you're going to get a chance to see him play the first time this year, Blaine yes. Snitker, your uh, preseason All-American uh, yes. Division Three linebacker. Well, another uh, great, uh, great honor for him. He's a semifinalist for the prestigious Campbell Trophy, which they consider that the Heisman of academics in football. Yeah, they do. And uh, Paul Meisen, who's sitting right over here next to us, has done such a great job promoting our student athletes. And, and we're very lucky to get uh, – Blaine in the semifinalists. We've been here seven years now, and I think we've had three that have got into that semifinalist, and four got in the semifinalist, and one became a finalist. So it is really, uh, I think, a testament to Blaine about the amount of work and effort that he puts in to things outside of football. Now, there isn't a kid on our team that works harder than Blaine, but tonight he was going to be a guest on the radio show, but we have a Went Scholarship program on campus, and they have a meeting tonight, and he's a part of that Went Scholarship, which is based on his academic prowess. But other than that, he does tremendous community service, not only here in Dubuque, but at his hometown where he came from. He's a gifted student. He's going to become a high school football coach and math teacher. He's going to have, be an outstanding educator and coach, but more importantly, he's just a great person who overachieves in everything he does. Unfortunately, he's missed these first three games with an injury that he had during the summer working out that we weren't able to identify until we got here. It was misdiagnosed or whatever, and I shouldn't say that. It was not 
it was more severe than the local doctor thought it was, so we had to do a little surgery on him. He's missed three weeks now. Oh, my gosh, he's like a racehorse in the <laughs> ready to come out of the Not whatever bad. they come out of the shoots because he's ready to go play now. And uh, we're excited about getting him back, but I can't tell you how proud I am of him, of what he's done outside of football because 20 years from now I'll remember him as a – a great person and everything he's done. I won't remember what a great player he was, and he is, but I'm going to tell you all the things he's done far overshadows his football. Yeah, that's uh, quite an honor just to be a semifinalist. I think uh, this year it was 135 uh, players yep. from Division One to every uh, level. Yep, yep every F level. FBS and uh, Division Three. So. That is a great honor. Well, uh, you're working this week uh, to get ready for the Luther College Norse as the Iowa Conference portion of the schedule opens up. And I know you're chopping to the bit to get the uh, conference we are. season going because that's why you play such a non-conference uh, schedule. You want to be competitive and uh, play for championships. Yeah, last year was a, a really uh, – they did an outstanding job rushing the football. We were talking about that in the previous segment. And they rushed for over 400 yards against us, and their quarterback had over 200 and, you know, the thing that sticks out to me about that game, their, their time of possession was 2-1. to one. They had almost yep. 40 minutes to our 20. Now, that speaks about their offense, but also speaks about our lack of offense in that game, obviously, because we couldn't stay on the field. They bring into town a wishbone offense, which is a triple option, which means four guys could, con could conceivably carry the football in any play. They are as physical as a football team as we've seen. They are getting better at running the option. It's coaches third year up there, and they're getting better and better and more concise. And they kind of have an answer for everything that you do defensively. So you've got to have more than one answer for them. And the biggest thing, I think, is you've got to be able to tackle well, and you've got to be assignment sound. Because if somebody tackles somebody that they weren't supposed to and the quarterback disconnects or pitches, you have a guy running down the field untouched. And last year, that quarterback did that a number of times to us. So it'll be a really important part for us to be disciplined, but you can't forget about the physicality in this game. They have an outstanding fullback. He is a big person. He runs hard inside the tackles. They will feature him, and you must stop the fullback if you want to beat them. So there are a lot of different plans to stop the fullback, but Tim – you got to stop the fullback without letting the quarterback and the pitch back be free. So it, it, it entails a very complex scheme on us defensively. It requires us to be well-disciplined to read blocking schemes and tracks of their offense. And so the hardest thing, Tim, I've always said this to all our guys, and I used to play in that offense when I was in college, and I've had a lot of background in that offense, practice and it is almost mm -hmm. impossible because you can't get guys to simulate what they're doing you know that takes a long time you got four days to do it and then the first quarter it's like there's a different speed they're working at than you've seen all practice so again I think it's impaired upon us on offense to start fast to be able to maintain ball possession and also be able to score some points but to allow our defense to catch up to what they're doing. And it, it is, it's a difficult, really difficult scheme to defend. And so we've spent all off the last week when our kids head off, we were spending as much time as we possibly can. And, of course, it all comes down to what the kids know, not necessarily what the coaches know. So we've been trying to sim be simplified with a couple, two or three different schemes that we can show and change because if you stay in the same thing, they will rip you. They will rip you. They'll have an answer for whatever your scheme is that you're working. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm really excited because they really took it to us last year, Tim. Mm -hmm. I, I thought that was our biggest, our toughest loss of the season last year was up there at their place. So I'm excited about getting us a chance to get back and see if we can't play the option better than we did last year. Yeah, you mentioned uh, their rushing attack uh, and their win over Grinnell. They rushed for 509 <laughs> yards, yep. uh, and so uh, obviously Grinnell had a hard time uh, containing yeah. that uh, that uh, triple option. And uh, they they got another win over St. Olaf, uh, losing to Lacrosse up at the season, yeah. but a pretty competitive game against a WIAC opponent. Yeah, up there. And, and you know we've played Lacrosse uh, previous two years, and we beat them once, and they beat us. So I think that's a good measure. They're a very good competitive team, Luther, and they're going to be. I'm sure they believe that if they get their offense rolling, they can beat anybody, and there's some truth to that because they maintain such great ball possession, and they just 
that fullback, he's a tough son of a gun. And so you've got to stop the fullback, but you've got to be sound in the other phases of the option. And therein lies the problem. I think it will all come down to how well we tackle, how well when we do make them punt the ball that we can do something on offense to help our defense stay off the field and hopefully be able to score points on a majority of our possessions. Tim, about uh, 11 years ago, I did a study on everybody that's played the wishbone. I did it over 10 years mm -hmm. and at River Falls in the WIC, who was a wishbone team for 22, 23 years. The average possessions you get in a normal game is 13. Mm -hmm. The average possession you get in a wishbone is 8.5. So you are going to get limited possessions because the game shrinks so much. So when we're trying to impress upon our offense, you aren't going to get a heck of a lot of opportunities. So you need to be able to be efficient when you get out there. And then if we're really impressed upon our defense, try to limit their possessions, try to make some big plays. Now, a year ago, we didn't get a fumble on those guys till the fourth quarter. The next game they played, they turned it over five times. If you can get them to turn it over, attack the mesh point, do some things differently that gives that quarterback a little bit more difficult time on his read keys, you have a chance to create some turnovers. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, you better play sound defense, you better tackle, and you better make sure you got your eyes where they're supposed to be so you're disciplined on your keys. Mm -hmm. Being that every uh, possession is going to be oh. important, uh, how about Luther's defense? You know, Luther's defense has played very well. I like to look at it and say they haven't played as much as their offense has played. So if you can be on the field as much as their offense is, that will put a little bit different stress level on them. Uh, they are a very sound defense. They've got outstanding corners, and they have a 4-2 box, which I think they're going to maintain to play in, and they're trying to get their safeties involved in the run game. The good news for us, I think, in many ways, Tim, we've seen that front not only from our own defense, but we've seen it uh, three the three games we played, some form of that. So I believe we probably are prepared about you know what the scheme is now you got to match up with the personnel and be able to do a good job with that you mentioned blaine snitker you're going to have him back um, health wise are you pretty good uh, as you go into the iowa conference schedule our uh, our train report the first three weeks were two pages long we're down to eight <laughs> athletes on that now and that's, that's pretty that's good that's a good deal isn't it <laughs> so we've got 121 guys that we think are healthy and have about four or five guys that are still a little bit nicked up but you know, when we went to Pacific, we were missing uh, two starters on defense, and uh, really uh, a lot of our depth had some nicks and bruises. Those guys have seemed to be better now. So I think we'll be pretty close to full strength, Tim. With the Iowa Conference uh, getting underway this uh, Saturday, everybody's going to be playing league games. Uh, how about the Iowa Conference and the non-conference uh, from what you saw stacked up against uh, non-conference opponents? I guess just what I thought. I thought Warburg was probably going to be the team to beat, and they've done a tremendous job. They beat a good Bethel team out of the MIAC, and they beat Augsburg out of the MIAC, two really good teams. You know, I, I really think that uh, Central is playing very well. Um, Coe has played well in two of their three games. Uh, again, I, I think it's going to come down to, you know, who's healthy and how you play and when you play, and I still think Wartburg is probably the team to beat. All starts this Saturday as the Spartans get ready to take on the Luther Norse at uh, Chalmers Field here. Kickoff will be at 1 o'clock, and we'll have pregame coverage on 101.1 The River at uh, 1240 on uh, Saturday afternoon. Coach, anything else uh, before we let you go here? should be a really fun game. I think for any of the fans listening, one of the great things about watching, I think, small college football is there's in the professional level, you see the same offense and the same defense week in and week out. You're going to come and see an offense that you aren't going to see very often. You're going to see a team that really runs it very well. It's uh, – it's really kind of exciting. It's like a tank battle in the desert. It's not like throwing the ball all over. It's a little bit. There's a lot of running going on. And if you like physical football, that's really a good brand of football to see. And then you're going to see a little contrast from us is that we're going to try to be as balanced as we can both throwing and running. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say that our quarterback has really improved from game one. He hasn't, you know, hadn't played for two years, and I think he's just starting to hit his stride right now. So I'm really excited about the conference schedule as our quarterback starts to get his feet underneath him and gets a little bit more familiar with our offense. Coach, we'll look forward to the Iowa Conference opener this Saturday. Thanks for joining us here on this Monday night, and uh, good luck the rest of the week in practice, and we'll see you Saturday. Looking forward to seeing you on Saturday, Tim. Thank All you. All right. Stan Zweifel, head football coach here at the University of Dubuque on the UD Football Show. 
We'll come back with some final thoughts, and we'll wrap up the broadcast for this Monday night. When we return, you're listening to UD Football Show on 101.1 The River. And we're back at Chalmers Field, wrapping up this UD football show and looking forward to Saturday's broadcast as the Spartans take on the Luther College Norse. Uh, that really uh, set the Spartans back, as Coach Sweefel said last year, with that loss up at Luther. So I know they're hoping to get off on the right foot in a conference play, and uh, you want to protect your home field as well. And so the Spartans will be attempting to uh, – uh, accomplish both of those missions uh, this Saturday. So we will look forward to the broadcast. If you tuned in late to the program and you want to view or listen back to the entire broadcast, it will be in on-demand form on the University of Dubuque's website, dbq.edu, and uh, go to the athletics page and you can find the link for it there. Again, our broadcast coming up this Saturday. Jim Kaloran will join myself for our play-by-play -play coverage of uh, UD Spartan football coming up this Saturday as they take on the Luther College Norris. One o'clock with a kickoff. Tune in for the pregame show coming from Chalmers Field at 1240. And then next Monday night, we'll be back on the air with another UD football show with Coach Stan Zweifel, 6 o'clock on Monday night. So that's going to put a lid on our UD football show for this week. Thanks to Coach Zweifel for stopping by again, and thanks to you for tuning in to our broadcast. This is the UD football show on 101.1 The River.